I will say um, in appreciation of the Zen tradition that there is a certain kind of dynamic vitality in the Zen style of enlightenment. It's just a style, okay? It's not like, you know, oh, well, Zen starts where all this other stuff ends. Mm -hmm. It's not that way at all. I think that's just BS to claim that, mm -hmm. okay? But uh, the way that the Zen people express enlightenment in their actions has a kind of bouncy vitality to it that, uh, and spontaneity that is the result of um, a certain style of cultivation. That's where I see the strongest impact of style. People can get enlightenment doing uh, vipassana practice, and sometimes it's a, a sort of inert enlightenment. It, that means great, okay, compared to non-enlightenment, I mean, there's just <laughs> no comparison. Okay. But there, there can sometimes be a kind of flatness to it, not inevitably, I'm just saying sometimes. Whereas the Zen people um, have this uh, sort of bouncy experience of nothingness, that uh, they're able to convey. What part of the practice of, of the Zen? It's the lifestyle, the Zen lifestyle oh. where, see basically if I were to contrast Vipassana and Zen uh -huh. in a gross oversimplification, uh -huh. I would say that in Vipassana you observe, you observe your experience first and you come to an experience of the flow of impermanence and then maybe somewhere down the line, maybe you begin to ride on that flow of impermanence in how you speak and move in the world. In Zen, before you realize the impermanent nature of experience, the lifestyle is forcing you to ride on impermanence. Because you have to run around and stop on a dime. Run around like crazy, stop on a dime. Run around like crazy, stop on a dime. Okay? And sounds like my life. Uh, Am I doing well, that? It, no, because in, in daily life, that just leads to freneticness and confusion. Yes. But within the context of Zen training, if it works out well, it leads to an ability to manifest and disappear, manifest and disappear in your actions. And then with time, you come to experience that as being the nature of experience. So you sort of act it out first right. and then realize it. Kind of so whereas in Vipassana, you realize it and then maybe ride on it, or maybe not. Right. So the advantage to the Zen training when it really works is that it guarantees this dynamic expression of enlightenment. The possible disadvantage is because it is in some ways sort of like daily life, mm -hmm. maybe if it doesn't work, all it's going to end up doing is making you frenetic and confused. Mm -hmm. So there's advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the Vipassana way of working may not lead to the vitality, but it's like a paint-by-numbers kit. It's likely to at least lead to something like a work of art, okay? Uh, uh, Zen is sort <laughs> I of like, that and thing. Zen is sort of like, here's the canvas, there's the paints, now do it. Yeah. <laughs> but when it works, it has a, a stunning vitality to it that you may not find in the paint-by-numbers kit.